Alrighty guys, welcome back. We are here with another motherboard video and today we're looking at the MSI MPG V850i Edge Ti Wi-Fi motherboard. So this was another board that was announced at Computex earlier this year. Just let me quickly take it out. So yeah, this was another board that was announced at Computex this year and I believe that MSI had two more in the ITX uh, space. They have a beefier X870 not sure if it's an XA70E or an X870 without the, and then they then they have an Intel variant. So, for those who aren't familiar with the MSI lineup, the series they have is the M, uh, M the Meg MEG, the MPG, then the MAG, the Mag, the Pro. So that's the order. So Meg, MPG, MAG, and Pro. So the MEG, the Meg, which is their godlike, that's the top tier, and then this is the MPG in that series so this is the second in their lineup and then as i mentioned earlier they also have an x870 be interesting to see i can't see any information on when that is going to be launched that one looks like a little a uh, little bit of a beast it's got a uh, chromed io cover which looks really cool and it also has dual 40 gigabit type c on the rear i don't think i've seen a mi text board that has that yet so like always i'll go over this board Obviously being an ITX board, probably not as much to cover as a full size. I'll go over the aesthetics like I do, and then all the main features. Normally I cover things like lane sharing and all of that, but on an ITX board, I doubt it if you are going to have that. Um, I'll go over that anyway, just in case they are, and then throw in some memory. Obviously on a board like this, silver, the gray PCB, what does it look like on the back? Same gray again. Obviously some silver memory would probably look best. So as I said, ITX form factor, pretty much fit in any standard case. Uh, and then obviously you're probably gonna put this in an ITX case, probably nothing bigger than that. I guess you could, it would look a little bit weird. Now, no debug LED as in the two digit display. It's just got your standard uh, small one there with the LED indicators, which has like the CPU, the RAM, the VGA, and then the boot LEDs that light up. Power delivery is eight, two and one people may think well atx boards have 20 and so on obviously itx boards are going to be a lot less there's not as much gear to handle and you don't normally really push those too high it's got half the amount of memory channels but eight for this board is pretty decent you can see it over there and then we have a beefy little heatsink over there and there's no fan on that one but it's probably not needed i do think that the xa70 variant when it comes out does have a fan on the top there for that board. Moving on to memory, only two DIMMs, not four like on a standard MATX or ATX. That's up to 128. On a four board, it would be 256 because you can now get the uh, 64 uh, gig modules. That's up to a whopping 10,000 mega transfers. Now, I believe that'll be on 8,000 series processors only. On your normal, probably people will be putting 9,000 or 7,000. You're looking at around 8,200 mega transfers for the max speed. Whether you're gonna get that comes down to many factors, um, but we all know on AMD, the sweet spot is around the 6,000, 6,600, get some really, really good latency memory and you will be good to go. PCIe, of course, is just one. That's your standard on a ITX board. If you're looking at PCIe Gen 5, wouldn't expect anything else. And then it is a full 16, electrically 16. And then we do have a bit of an old school slot, nothing fancy. No quick release buttons, quick eject, anything like that. Actually, let me take that peel off there. One peel, actually no peel on the IO cover. That's interesting. And then we do have your two SATA over here. I often don't cover the SATA. I don't think too many people use it, but we all know that most boards, I don't think I've seen a board does not come with SATA. Normally on an ITX, you're looking at two. ATX, MATX is either gonna be two, four or six depending on the model and how many features the board has. Moving down to the M.2 storage support, I may take this off because I believe the primary is gonna be under here. So no quick release or anything. Two screws, they are pretty fine. And then you just move this out of the way. It does have a little built-in fan. It'll be interesting to see how noisy that is, but obviously, this is going to be your Gen 5 because it's got the fan and then it also says that um, 
also says it there as well primary is the gen 5 and then that's up to the size 2280 let me spin this around and just take a look at the thermal pad there see the thermal pad there and then that fan is actually going to go directly blowing onto that m.2 kind of heavy feeling as well all right let me screw this back in hopefully it all lines back up then the second is from the chipset so primary always from the cpu uh the second is around the back here let me know your thoughts do you prefer boards that has one on the back one on the main side or then some other boards like the rog boards have the double stacked ones on the main side so you normally have to undo like these huge screws you take off one layer then you take off another layer and that's how they stack them and then you have boards like this where you have the single one on the top and then the uh, single one on the rear sometimes the one on the rear can be a little bit hard to access it if you need to uh, reach it later if your motherboard cutout isn't big enough in the case or you have something like a heatsink on because if you are running gen 4 is not too bad but i would still run some sort of a heatsink on a gen 4 just depends how much clearance you have on the back of your case where the motherboard goes that the heatsink will clear obviously one with the beefy fan may not support and then both of those are the 22 80 in size yep no larger for that network you're looking at real tech now i'm pretty stoked that this has 5g 5g lan which is pretty good normally itx boards unless it's not the super super high-end model it's normally 2.5 i believe i don't think one is going to be a standard anymore normally 2.5 is so five which is good and then four i thought that might have stood up then for the wi-fi wi-fi 7 and 4 so let me quickly open this I always like to check out the uh, Wi-Fi antenna. So Wi-Fi 7, as I said in a previous MSI video that when MSI launched these latest boards that came out saying all their Wi-Fi 7 boards will support the larger bandwidth 320. And that's exactly what they've done here. So you've got 320 megahertz channel bandwidth for the Wi-Fi and that's up to uh, 5.8 gigabits for the transfer rate. I've actually matched this to go with the uh, the actual design of the board let me see if i can get this in okay so that just goes in like that this is actually magnetic this desk is uh metal so it sticks onto that pretty good and then it is a grayish color now i mentioned this before they've matched it to go with the board sort of but then if you got this sticking on your case like unless your case is from the 80s and it's beige it's probably not going to match too well. So I think either they need to stick to a white antenna or probably a, well, I'm saying that this isn't beige, it's close to beige. They should probably stick to white or a black uh, because that's probably going to be a little bit of an eyesore if that's sticking up on the top of your case. But anyway, um, they have gone to the effort to match it. And then I believe that these ones are once again, like most of the other brands are doing, push in, push in, straight in like that. And that looks super super clean pushes straight out no more screwing in not like that was a, a big drama anyway having to screw in your antennas that you probably did once a year but nonetheless they have added that usb on the rear total of six ports i believe one two three four five six so we have one usb 20 single 20 no 40 three usb 10 which are the type a the reds one two three and then two USB uh, Type-A, which are your five gigabits. So two fives, three tens, and then one 20. So as I mentioned earlier, that new X870 board that MSI are bringing out, which I don't have a launch day yet, that one had 240, which is uh, not 240, two separate 40 gigabit ports for the Type-C on the rear, which is pretty nuts for an ITX board. And then moving on to front USB, you're looking at a single uh, 10 gigabit type C for the front pedal not 20 interesting that they've gone with 10 then we have your standard USB 3.0 which will give you your two 5 gigabits and then a single dual USB 2 which will give you your standard two USB type A so five on this ITX board so normally on an ATX and an MATX it's seven for the front and then normally on an ITX they drop one of the USB 2 so they go from seven to five then the rest of the IO nice that they've added the clear CMOS and BIOS flashback button, which is nice. They're always handy to have. Uh, if a new CPU comes out, you don't have the CPU and then vice versa. 
you don't need anything installed you can just flash it straight away whether you want to go up a version down a version and so on hdmi only no display ports that's hdmi 2.1 max res of 8k 60 hertz and then you've got some audio there that's pretty much it for the io so price of this board you're looking at around 289 us dollars so that pretty much puts it in the ballpark of most of the other boards it's going to be interesting to see what this new xa70e or the xa7 i don't know if it's an e or non e is going to come out and be price wise because it does have those dual uh 40 gigabit it's probably going to have beefier vrm and some other features as well so i think the rog strix is about 450 uh it's going to be interesting to see how much more or if it's in the same ballpark as that just want to make sure i covered everything else cover the aesthetics another look at the memory in this board because i always like to try and match everything and see how it all looks and then i actually didn't talk about the oh yes they are so the back m.2 actually uses a screw to screw it down maybe because they want to use a screw to keep it as low profile as possible because around the back if they put like a, a quick release clip or something it may fail or something like that and let's have a look at what the actual uh clip is using on the primary oh yeah so we're using a screw as well i don't think that's a huge concern like it wouldn't be a deal breaker for me if a board was using for the m.2 was needed two screws instead of like the ez clips or something as you can see it needs a screw to lock that in but anyway I think that is it for this video. Not too much to cover on these ITX boards. Obviously, the larger board is going to have more items to cover. But anyway, I want to thank MSI for sending this out to check out. I want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.